Okay, welcome, welcome. We are going to go ahead and get started here in just a minute. Um, so just so everyone knows, we are going to be talking about uh, tips and live streaming today uh, for live streaming your classes. Um, this is uh, also being recorded so that we can put it on and teachers who are not able to attend today can access this or you can even access this at another time and uh, get caught back up on everything that you uh, missed or were interested in. So um, as we go ahead and get started here today, uh, as we go through, I will be um, showing you some different things in this uh, slideshow. At the end, I'm actually, I'm going to put the link to the slideshow in the chat so that you can uh, follow along if you'd like. There's some things in there you can follow along with. And this will also be on the uh, Canvas course. Uh, at the end of this in the um, bite size PD section that it'll be the video of our presentation today and the link to the presentation so you can continue to access it as you go through. Okay, if you do have any questions as we go through, just put them in the chat and let us get started. So as I said, this is being recorded. Um, so our professional development norms as we go through today, uh, because this is quick 30 minutes and it's a lot of stuff to cover, uh, we want to make sure we go through it as best as we can. So remember, uh, just take care of yourself. Ask the clarifying questions in the chat. Um, super happy to help and support that as well. Um, and as we are doing this online, uh, some of our professional development norms, uh, make sure your microphone's muted. You can turn your camera on if you're comfortable. That's totally fine. Um, and if you have a question or comment, like I said, just use the chat there. Everything we do here in Canyons is uh, related to our uh, framework, our MTSS framework. And this part, talking today specifically about live streaming, fits into a lot of the things uh, in our blue section here um, that really kind of help support that high quality academic um, instruction for students. So our learning intentions today. First, I am learning about live streaming options and best practices so that I can determine which live streaming option is best for me to implement and support my students. Um, so just so you're aware, this is gonna be secondary focus today. So if you, um, if, uh, that's, that's kind of where we're gonna focus our conversation as we go through this time. So um, once again, this, we're talking about live streaming. We aren't going to focus too much on how to use tools specifically. Um, I'm going to talk to you about some of the different pieces, but we're going to talk about uh, the big picture of live streaming overall and then get into some of the nitty gritty. Um, so we'll define live streaming. We'll talk a little bit about that. Talk a little bit about synchronous and asynchronous, different levels of live streaming, which I think will help you uh, kind of determine how you want to in incorporate this into your classroom. Uh, we'll talk about some of the best practices for live streaming and then um, some collaboration. Remember to keep your mind open as you go through about different ideas and different pieces. So the first thing that we want to kind of talk about and stress is the idea of synchronous versus asynchronous. Um, and sometimes we get these confused and we start thinking in person and online. And that's not necessarily true because in our in-person courses, we have synchronous moments where we're all doing something together and we have asynchronous moments where students are working on something by themselves uh, with instruction uh, or, or another activity. So really be thinking about that, especially as you get into live streaming, where you're going to be having students in multiple different categories, um, whether they be online and in person or you're online only, however that works, um, remember that that synchronous learning can still be happening um, in real time. So if I have students online, I am technically still giving synchronous instruction because it's happening at that same time, no matter if they're online or in person. Um, for those of you who just joined us, um, I put the link to the presentation that we're using in the chat if you would like to follow along um, as we go through today. So let's define live streaming real quick, just so we all have a good understanding of where we're starting from. So live streaming refers to that online streaming of media, so your video and audio, that's being recorded and broadcast in that real time. So the, what we're doing right now, live streaming, have this live meeting, I'm sending out this instruction um, in real time. Non-live media, such as videos embedded into Canvas, a YouTube video, a screencast, 
that are streamed but not live streamed technically. So those are being streamed to the students, but it's not something that is live streamed right now. So this would be similar to in your class when you're teaching second period and, and a video is, you're having a video out there that students are watching second period at that exact time. Those are our live stream moments. Now to help support teachers uh, as we move through this idea of bringing in live streaming into your classroom, we've developed a three tiered le level of live streaming. So we have level one live streaming, a level two live streaming and level three live streaming. These three are based off of uh, basically how deep you want to go into live streaming itself. So looking at what, what's your purpose for live streaming what it, and what do you want students to do in live streaming. We're going to talk about each one of these levels in detail here uh, coming up. So this is just kind of a, a, an overview for you, but there's three levels, basically level one starting with no observation, no interaction from students moving to level three, which is students uh, fully participating, interacting with the teacher and other students. So let's chat a little bit about that. Level one. So level one live streaming is really where students just watch. There is no back and forth that um, happens. It's basically students log in to watch you teach your lesson. Okay, so the student uh, is basically just there to to um, get information and not to participate in the class in a level one. They're an observer only. So um, they, you're using Meet or Zoom. They're watching the live stream and doing what they're being asked to do. Okay, so you can kind of look through some of the different things. We've broken it up. What you would want to do in Canvas. What are some software that you would need? How you would use it? Um, and what equipment and options would you be using? So if you look at, for example, um, you know, Google Meet or Zoom is our software process. You, here's some things that we recommend. If you're using Google Meet to set your resolution to 720, that allows your camera to be a little bit wider and um, get a bigger view for the student. Um, we recommend you know, students using those options and not using, there's an option, I don't know if you've seen it, when you create a Google Meet, it asks you, do you want this to be a live stream? Um, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um, and a lot of people say, oh yeah, let's do, let's do that. And this, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a live stream. So let's call it a live stream. The problem is that there is a 30 second to maybe almost minute delay in what you're doing and what students are doing. So you see this option, it'll pop up here in just a second, right down here where it says, um, oh, no, it's not going to do it because I want it to. So there's an option that'll show up down here called live stream this meeting. It's also once you join it, um, I can't join another. It does not want me to join another one while I'm on here with you. So um, I will, but so that's an option for you as well. Your laptop, desktop computer, a camera, you can just use your internal camera or you can use um, one of these classroom kits. So let's talk about those. So some of you might have a classroom kit um, already. So what is the classroom kit? It is, so this is the classroom kit there. So the classroom kit contains uh, a webcam, an external webcam, and this box, this audio box. Uh, and this, the IT has bought, I think about 500 of these. They're starting to set, send them out to our high schools, roughly 50 to every school, secondary, whatnot. Um, if you're interested or, or haven't heard of these and you're interested in one of these kits, talk to your principal, ask them how you can get access to one of these. Um, but so be thinking about that kit. So how you're setting these up in your school or in your classroom, you can see over here on the right, oh, not yet. Uh, you've got the camera connected in, the teacher has their microphone on, and this audio box, it connects to um, the sound in your classroom, the overhead sound in your classroom, so that you can be projecting what's on the screen. Students can see it through their camera, um, but then also hearing the sound that's going through your microphone. This helps a ton with the audio. I know that some teachers uh, tried live streaming even a little bit last year when we shut down, and they struggled. One of the biggest struggles was audio, being able to hear other students in the classroom or the teacher themselves as they moved around. They felt like they had to kind of be in one spot and they couldn't move. 
So this kit allows that sound to come through your ceiling and also any other sound that goes through your ceiling will go into uh, this, this for students. So let's say you're watching a video or showing a clip of something that will also go through uh, this blue box, this audio box that connects to your computer and go into the Google Meet um, or Zoom. So it allows your sound to be so much better. So these are those classroom kits. Like I said, if you're interested in these or would like to try one of these out, reach out to your principal, let them know um, and kind of go through and work through those pieces. So now let's talk about level two streaming. So level two streaming is all, uh, it's a limited capacity for students. So this is when students interact, but in a very small way. So you have something like either a back channel for students to uh, write questions or comments on. You're using maybe the chat bar for students to write questions, um, ask things. Uh, maybe every once in a while, you know, you um, have um, an, a moment where you're asking a student to respond. Um, those types of things. So that's a level two. With this level two, we recommend that the teacher um, does use one of those kits like we were just talking about. Um, they make things easier. This is also really helpful in this limit, this level two where you're wanting students to participate. Things like um, Nearpod are a great option because that allows students to uh, participate in the Nearpod and you're getting feedback and data still through that Nearpod, but you're not having to have them respond to everything. You're not having to see them necessarily uh, as well who are online. So um, level two just kind of ups that a little bit, okay? We recommend that if you're interested in, um, in moving forward to something like this where you're having a back channel it's a great idea if you have a student in the class who's in charge of managing that back channel um, so for example you know as, as that's happening you can turn to the student and say okay billy are there questions that we need to answer from the back channel or did anyone have anything from the back channel or you can ask your students who are being live streamed to hey go ahead and type into the back channel or into the chat these things uh, and it lets you have a little bit of freedom where you don't have to be teaching, watching your in-person class, checking the back channel, doing all of the things at the same time. It gives you some, some uh, flexibility as it goes through that. Okay, so let's talk about the level three uh, level of live streaming. So level three is where students who are being live streamed to, so who are not in person, are full participants in the class. This means that they can uh, speak to you as, a, as the teacher. They can, you can put groups of students together and have students at, who are in person and students who are um, at home talking to each other. So it's really going like all the way to make the student who is the students who are being live streamed to full participants in the classroom. So the examples of this beyond the normal giving your instruction would be things like um, you are giving that instruction and then you're breaking students into groups, you're separating students out, having them join a, a breakout group, they're being having their breakout group coming back together to the live stream moment, um, those different types of things that are going on. Okay, so um, as you're thinking about that, we've also kind of laid out some of the, those same things, looking at a back channel, um, how you're wanting to do that, looking at how your setup is in your classroom, what resources and what devices you have in your classroom. Uh, that can also help as you're going through these different pieces. The camera, classroom camera kit is also uh, a helpful resource. Okay, so this is an example of a uh, teacher who actually live streamed to her class. Um, we're not gonna watch the whole thing. This is one of those that you can come back and watch on your own if you would like to. Uh, but basically, we have a teacher who's connected her iPad to her computer. She can, she's projecting her um, computer through her Apple TV onto the, um, onto the projector for students to see that are in class. And it's also projected, um, and she's sharing her screen. So you can see she's got her screen here. And then if you see the picture, that's the camera that she has connected that can, so the students can see the entire class. Okay, this is a level two, maybe a little level three. Uh, it's approaching level three of a live streaming option because she does have the students who are participating online 
actually participate in the lesson. She calls on them, she does some things through them, has them work through some pieces as well. So, um, so you can watch pieces of this. Like I said, it's, it's 44 minutes, so we're definitely not gonna watch it all here. Uh, but I want you to kind of see what's going on and what's happening here as the teacher is setting up her camera, her, her computer. She's got her slides. She's using Notability here. Uh, as you can see, that's what she's using to forward her slides so that she can be moving around the classroom and writing on the whiteboard, the virtual whiteboard, all at the same time. So you can see as she does that one part I want to point out right I think it's here. Um, and like I said, you do have the option. You can watch this on your own um, as you go through. But she will. Good job, you guys. I'm saying excellent, excellent work. Michael, would you give us a puzzle piece? So she's using um, the back channel and the uh, that a student is managing to get some of those responses and then having certain students respond as well. So let me hear right here. So this is another option. So if you're wanting to know and kind of think through what would this look like for me, this is a great video for you to watch and uh, see how things are going. And like I said, it's in the slideshow. You can go ahead and watch that um, and let me know if you can't see it or something for some reason. Okay. Here we go. So uh, some best practices for live streaming. So live streaming, uh, for those of us who are pretty familiar with a Google Meet or a Zoom, it doesn't really change much. Once you get that kit, uh, the technology side of things doesn't really change anything much. Instead of using the, the embedded camera in your laptop, you're using an external camera. Instead of choosing your internal microphone, you're choosing this external microphone. So on the tech side of things, things are pretty similar depending on what level of live streaming you want to go to. What's different is what we do as teachers uh, when we are live streaming. So the way we actually create our lessons and those experiences and opportunities for students, they're going to need to change. So here are some of those best practices for live streaming. The first off, before we go through this list of 10, remember back to the best practices we talked about at Tech Summit, those best practices for digital teaching and learning. All of those still exist and apply and can be really helpful in helping you make the connection with your live students uh, to your in-person students in class. So that's those best practices for digital teaching and learning, number one. So um, the next one, uh, clearly communicate live stream times and provide a link in Canvas. So this is putting your course schedule on Canvas so students don't have to wonder, what time are we starting? When was that? What period? Uh, because as we know, students become so reliant on the bell that, that that's just when they know things happen and well, sometimes not even then, right? So making sure you're letting them know and parents know, oh, these live streams are at this time. That'll cut down on a lot of questions for you. Okay, uh, number three, enable closed captioning. So this has two different options for you and then a warning. If you're using Google Meet, uh, students can enable uh, closed captioning on their own. There's not something you need to do as a teacher. Uh, if you're using Zoom, there is a button for you to, to click as a teacher uh, to enable that. But be very careful with closed captioning, especially this automatic closed captioning. Um, it picks up what, we th what it thinks we said right? Um, it's not always exactly what we said. And we've had a couple of examples of um, outraged parents who are upset because uh, a swear word came up on the screen when the teacher didn't necessarily say a swear word, uh, but the computer thought it heard that. And so um, that that's just a little caution as you're, as you're relating to closed captioning. Always have something on the screen for students to follow along with. Uh, a Nearpod, a classroom whiteboard, your presentation, and have something for them to do. So if you came in, when you came in at the beginning, I have a slide up that says, as you come in, go ahead and do this thing. Um, and, and that helped those students so when we were ready, because at the beginning of class, as we all know as teachers, I'm ready, I'm, I'm taking attendance, and then this thing happened, and this person needs to talk to me, and then someone you know, dropped this, and I need to, we don't maybe necessarily start right at the time I think we are going to, and your online students are sitting there waiting if you're live streaming and you're wanting to make sure they have something to do, that starter, whatever it is, so that they're also on task as you're getting the in-person students together. 
provide opportunities for students to engage with the material being shared. Um, so whether it be them submitting something during the live stream, typing in something, uh, completing a, you know, kind of a worksheet of sorts as you're going through, but giving them an opportunity to continue to go through those pieces. Clearly communicate norms and expectations during your live stream. So at the beginning of our live stream, I started out with here's what the expectations are. Here's what I need you to do. Um, make sure you're having those same things as well. Um, provide those upfront. Don't assume that because students are high school students or middle school students that they just know how to behave online or in person, right? So um, have those, those pieces um, very clearly laid out and review them often. For students, um, make sure you're clear about how they can contact you. If they have a question or a comment, do you want it in the chat feature? Do you want it in a separate Google Doc that your class shares? Do you want a questions emailed to you? Um, how do you want students to actually communicate with you? That's gonna be a really important thing to help uh, limit your stress during a presentation and during a teaching moment. Um, if students, you know, you can say, okay, if it's about what we're talking about, do this. If it's just a general question, do this. So you don't have the, you know, the silly question in the middle, like, oh, did you get to grade my paper that I turned in a couple of days ago? And you're like, we're in the middle of teaching right now. This that is not the time. So be clear about how they can communicate. For attendance, rather than doing roll call and wasting the time to go through all of those pieces, waiting for students to unmute themselves and all those things, have a Google form or some sort of a ticket that they can submit to you um, that helps keep track for you, uh, that makes your life a little bit easier. Make sure your Canvas course is set up to the CSD expectations and style guide, and you're using those modules to share materials so it's student easy for students to find it. They can just go in and say, oh yeah, we're on you know September 17th module. That's the module. I know where I'm at. I can go right in there. And then have a protocol uh, for what happens if there is a technical issue. So if students all of a sudden can't log in, what should students do? Um, if a student can't get into it, we already have these things laid out. If a student can't hear, uh, what should they do? Because what you don't want is to get so stuck and mired into uh, troubleshooting technical problems during the middle of class. Um, so have a, a, a flow chart, a checklist, you know, okay, if you can't hear, go ahead and keep watching or uh, go ahead and make sure you watch the video afterwards. Or um, if you can't hear, you know, do these few things or, or what, whatever that looks like. Um, have a protocol so if you do have a technical issue. So um, we're getting close to the end. We have about five minutes left. Um, go ahead, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the chat right now. I'm happy to answer those questions. I know this was kind of quick and, and, and dirty here. It's 30 minutes, right? We It's uh, pretty fast, but we just kind of wanted to go over those big picture uh, live streaming pieces. Like I said, if you're interested in one of those kits, reach out to your administration if you've not heard of um, from them. Um, remember that live streaming is not required. Um, no one's asking or telling you, at least from our level or from me, um, talk to your administration about um, their interest in you working through this live streaming process. And, and what pieces of your lesson you should be live streaming um, and what pieces maybe you don't need to live stream. All of those pieces, there's lots of questions. We're developing this as we go with you. Um, so we love your feedback, uh, your collaboration, all of those things. So um, if you don't have any questions or if you have questions later, that is a great, great question, Mary. Um, um, so, it depends. So some teachers are doing some different things. So one teacher who is live streaming right now in a middle school level has a Google folder set up for her students. And each day the student creates a new Google Doc. And when the teacher asks questions, they go in and they um, type their responses in that Google Doc. And that's the worksheet that students turn in at the end of the day. The teacher is shared in that Google folder and then can go look at it and grade it for um, collecting that work. Other things are done through Canvas assignments on, um, so, you know, quizzes, um, Google LTI assignments, and those types of things. So there's not necessarily um, the paper exchange, right, that we're used to in our classrooms. So it's something you have to think a little differently about how we're doing some of our assignments uh, that are not technically uh, those pieces, for sure. Does that answer a little bit of that question, Mary? 
feel free to jump in if you want to. And then Melody, looks like you have a question. Go ahead. Hi, Justin. Thanks for that Hi. training, by the way. Uh, so I just had a question. The teacher that you demonstrated uh, that was doing the live stream, so you're saying she was using Notability on her iPad, and then she was screen sharing to her Mac, correct? Correct. And then through from her Mac, you said she was using the Apple TV, but was she using the Apple TV to connect to the camera or? She was using her um, her iPad to her computer, and she, I think she was using. I I want to say that she was using. Um, I don't remember, like uh, Aircast or something. What was that? Parrot? I think that's what it was. Um, and then the she. Server? Yeah, and then she was using. She was just um, connecting to her Apple TV from her computer. Oh, okay. So that the kids could see what was on the computer, which was what was on her iPad. So because she wanted the students at home to see the iPad, and the only way they could do that was if it was on the computer. So she didn't go straight from the iPad to the Apple TV because she wanted the at-home students to see the iPad as well. Okay, that makes sense. And then for a PC, I'm curious about half my high school teachers have a PC. Yeah. In that case, maybe they would need to use something like Doceri to make that connection. Yeah, I think it would need to be Doceri, or they could use the the um, air server. Yeah, I was going to say air server or Doceri. I mean, Doceri is something a lot of our PC teachers are familiar with. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think you're exactly right, Melody. Yeah, that makes sense because I think a lot of them prefer Notability, but then if they're on a PC, it wouldn't work to connect because yeah. they're on a PC, so they would need to use Air Server. Okay, well, that helps. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. No, that's a great question. Mary, I saw your hand went up. If you still have your question, jump on in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, sorry, I had to open my laptop. Uh, thanks for letting me join in and for all the info. Um, so my question is, so I see Nicole Rude's doing that. I love her, I think she's awesome and I know exactly what she's doing and teaching. I'm wondering if you have any videos of high school math. Um, I can reach out and find out. Um, I, not a lot of our high schools have started doing this yet. Um, Corner Canyon has more examples, so I can reach out and see what I can find um, and and connect with you about that. Okay, that would be great. Um, and then you had talked about they are using a Google form to respond or ask questions and that teachers are just kind of getting creative on that. So I guess I'm just wondering in the realm of math, um, if they're doing a live stream and they're using a Zoom or, well, likely we'll transition to Zoom, um, can, could they do group breakout sessions? Um, I'm just trying to think of how to engage the learner with students in the classroom for a structured classroom discussion. Yeah, so it's a great question. So one of the examples we've seen uh, to get students engaged in that is uh, when you have students come in, either the whole class logs into Chromebooks um, and joins the Google Meet or the Zoom or whatever it is. Um, so then when you do the breakouts, you can break out students and they take their Chromebook or you have one person per group log in and be the connector for the online student. So and you, that. say that again. You have seen that be successful. Yeah. Do we have video of a few that? times. Do we have the any video? One -on -one, the one-on-one -on one's a little much. Um, it becomes a kind of a management issue for teachers. So a lot of teachers are liking the just like, okay, we're going to do five groups today. So I need five. One, your group leader needs to grab a Chromebook, log in, and join our Google Meet or join this Google Meet with Billy and with Sally over there. And we'll put Billy and Bob over in this other one. So that's worked out pretty well. Okay. Um, and that'll be okay with Zoom as well, right? Yeah. Okay. Same thing. No, for great. now. And I'll get some more, I'll look for some more math high school examples. I'll see if Allison has any or if Katie Gephardt uh, or Jody I have any of those. So I'll let and you I know think, for sure. I think I've picked Allison's ear on it already because she and I have been kind of trying to brainstorm over here but at Jordan. But 
yeah, ask her again in case you got. Yeah, yeah no, I'll keep, I'll keep things up. So yeah, thank you, thank you. Great, great questions. Chris, Christina, you have a question. And as she comes in, um, I put the links in there to everything in the chat uh, to help you out. So where Canyons U is, if you want any information, some bite-sized PD page where this will be loaded here in just a bit. Uh, if you would like relicense your credit for attending today, there's a form there. And if you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see or things we could do better in the future as it relates to these bite-sized PDs, these little quick moments, fill out that form. Um, other than that, um, I will continue to ask questions as long after questions as long as you're here. You're welcome to pop out whenever you need to as well. Thank you for coming. Um, and Christina, you have a question. Oh, no worries. Okay, so breakout rooms at Google Meet, perfect. Um, that is something I have a document that can show you um, that walks you through um, how to do breakout rooms. There's a, an excellent um, application. It's like a extension that works really seamlessly. We've used it a few times in some of our team meetings and things like that. Uh, there's a little bit of setup to it, but it's pretty, pretty slick um, and pretty nice. The other option, um, is what what I've been doing for some of mine. So I've been um, I've been subbing a lot these last couple of weeks. I think I've subbed like three or four times, three or four days a week uh, in most of our schools. And one of the things I have been doing is I just say, you know, I create the breakout room and I open five Google Meets at the same time. And I call it, you know, Anderson one, Anderson two, Anderson three. So everyone is in the Google Meet Anderson room because that's where we're meeting at. And then I'll say, okay, everyone go ahead and go to uh, your Meet 1, your Anderson 2, your Anderson 3, or your Anderson 4. They join that one. When they're done there, they come back. The nice thing is it lets me be in every room at the same time so I can see what's kind of going on. I have to mute some things, uh, but this document and will walk you through all that. So uh, Christian, I can, I can share that document with you. I wish I had it on me right now. I just put the link in, but I will share that with you. Does anyone else want that as well? Put it in the chat. But is that work, Christine? Is that, does that work for you? Perfect. Okay. Sweet. So I will send you the breakout document. Cool meets. Okay. Other than that, thank you all for being here. Have a great time. Enjoy uh, the rest of your day. And I will talk to you all later. Thanks, Melody. It's always good to hear your voice. Never get to see you anymore. It's sad. Thanks, Christina.